think that's starting a business with someone you need trust. And the trust uh, with Nader started at the very beginning when I was a young researcher at the University of Trieste and Nader was uh, offering me a CFD code for doing optimization uh, in a European project. Uh, after that, everything came very naturally through the connections that we had over the years. From the introduction to our most important partner in Japan, uh, to the, op the opportunity of opening an office in North America decided in a, uh, in a very friendly way, thanks to the previous knowledge we had uh, of us. Yes, I, I remember that uh, we did meet in the mid-90s and it was a, uh, as Carlos said, it was a European funded project. We met over a glass of uh, Prosecco at, uh, at a company in North Italy that were using our software, uh, the CFD software. And um, so basically we, the company I was working with and, and the office I was working with, we offered to support Carlo in the, uh, in, um, that project providing CFD uh, licenses and um, we never really lost touch after that until uh, mid-2003 we got together again and by that time uh, I was looking for a new opportunity Carlo suggested that we do some business together in North America and we founded a stack North America around then and, uh, and never looked back since. years have been, it's been interesting because I would say that 20 years ago the, um, the adoption of software like Mode Frontier, and at the time there was only Mode Frontier, there wasn't, uh, we didn't have Volta, we didn't have Cardanet, uh, it was only Mode Frontier. The adoption of Mode Frontier was at a time when uh, this kind of tool was not so widely spread. So there were one or two commercial tools available. Um, I personally was very interested in the technology because when I used to do CFD studies before using Mode Frontier, I um, always felt that having a software which would act as a robot and would drive, uh, drive the simulation tool uh, towards, towards prescribed goals, towards uh, uh, desired outcomes was always something that uh, I always felt would have been interesting. Then, of course, along came Mode Frontier, and that's exactly what I felt was, uh, was missing from the arsenal of, the, uh, of a CFD user. So from my point of view, really I was looking at the software and the technology from the uh, viewpoint of the end user. If you were to look at our, the profile of the early adoption of uh, Mode Frontier in the Americas, because Esteco North America is responsible for North and South America, uh, it was fairly heavily CFD focused. So a lot of the early users were doing CFD. Uh, not only, there were some doing, uh, some doing crash analysis, so occupant safety, but there was a lot of early adoption among CFD users for the simple reason that that was the language I spoke. It was easiest to talk to CFD engineers. Um, moving forward, of course, we, I would say over the 20 years, we've grown our capacity, we've grown our, um, our knowledge base, we've grown our team uh, very much in line with the way the, the technology has grown. Uh, milestones, you can say they're probably have been several. Uh, without mentioning too many, we can say uh, from the point of view of business in North America, of course, we had, um, uh, when we first got into certain large companies, these were major milestones for us. Uh, we, we have to remember that 20 years ago, we had one single user at one, uh, at one company in the whole of North and South America. So, a big milestone was when one of our major clients, Ford, decided to adopt Mode Frontier as their major um, optimization and process integration tool to, to, uh, to be centralized and used across all departments. Um, another one, I would say, was when um, uh, our, the first time we, we reached a milestone of 20 plus licenses. There are many mi milestones like that along the way. But 
What I would say is that the adoption of the software and the growth of the usage and the growth of the company, there's been a, it, it, it's been fairly steady. So there, there hasn't been much in the way of a big jump at any moment, but neither has there been a big fall off. So if you look at, if you draw a line through the, the number of licenses, the business that we do over the last 20 years, and we've done over the last 20 years, it's, um, you can clearly see a, uh, a steady growth of pretty much a constant uh, increase going over the years. Well, I, I think that the role of, uh, of the headquarters, say, of the, of the company supporting the stick on North America operations has changed a lot over time. I mean, uh, if we think at the beginning, the beginning was mainly, well, I'm also a professor at university, was a teaching activity. We were, there is the need of uh, finding pioneers inside the companies and teach them the new technology almost from scratch. Over the years, this became competition and showing that we were better than others uh, until we get to the end of the journey, end of the journey so far known, there's still a long journey to do, but uh, becoming strategic to the decisions of a company. So at the beginning, we were, let's say, strategic to the individual work. The engineer designing a new component that want to reach the best of the performance of what the he is designing, that was the driving force. Now, the driving force is the competitive company. So, teaching the company to be competitive and to be at the edge of the engineering. And this is a very big difference from since we we born. And that's brought us a lot of developments in our technology as well. I think the, it really boils down to primarily three things. So obviously you need good technology. So the, and, and I was convinced certainly from the beginning um, that the technology was really outstanding. Uh, you then need a good team behind you and the first year or so I worked alone, but then gradually we built up this, uh, this very, very competent technical team. And that team is really, I would say, the main, one of the main drivers for our success. So a very good, very strong uh, technical uh, offering, a very strong uh, product combined with a very, very good technical support. And by good technical support, I mean, more than just technical ability, I mean enthusiasm. Uh, and I see that again and again among my, my colleagues in the, in the application team. And I hear it again and again from uh, pretty much all our users. The, uh, I, if there's one constant that we've had over the last 20 years, it's been that we offer really outstanding support. And, uh, and that's been one of our goals from the very beginning. So if you, if you take those two together uh, and then you really provide um, also flexible uh, service, you, you become a partner to your clients and not just a vendor to the clients, then you can really, it, it's really a win-win. It's a win-win in the sense that the clients will get far more out of using your software uh, and we ourselves learn a lot more about what the what industry needs. So from that point of view, it's, uh, it, it's a recipe that almost can't fail uh, as long as those three things stay, uh, stay constant and we, and we keep working on, on those three. We, of course, we should never take any of those three for granted. I just confirm, I mean, that team is, is what is needed. I mean, uh, from the first person to the last in the company, is not first and last, I mean, you can revert them. They are all essential and working for the common goal uh, of enjoying also what you're doing is, is, is what uh, characterize uh, our company, I would say our growth and our future, I hope. In, uh, um, it's, uh, if you think of software technology, 
uh, in 20 years, it, it's like, I mean, uh, ages. And the same is for our software. We started from optimization, basically because that was the technology accepted. Even if from the beginning we're thinking of a collaborative environment uh, over a distributed network, but it was impossible to offer to companies something that was open in their networks to, uh, to the to internet, I would say. I mean, I always say that an engineer is more jealous of his drawings than of his credit card. And it is like that, in a sense. So we had to wait for the maturing of the IT technology in order to be able to complete the journey, starting from optimization, initially of components, then integrating some components, so getting into a more sophisticated automation. After the automation, we started to do proper sharing. And now we are in that mood. And sharing means also to control the process. So optimization first, parameterization, automation, then distribution, I mean, cooperations, and then process. So we are now at the point where uh, the design process can become one of the many relevant processes in a company at the very strategic level. So as you can see, the audience and the type of people we are talking with changes over time. At the beginning was the individual engineer, today is the IT department together with the engineering part and hopefully soon even the commercial part of that company. Why not? Any significant difference between uh, the United States and, and other uh, industrial markets? Um, I think if we're talking about uh, companies which are anywhere at the leading edge of their uh, of, of technology within their industry, uh, we're we're really talking about uh, about the same types of companies. In fact, many of the companies we work with are um, uh, are, are multinational. They're they're really around the globe anyway. But how do we uh, how do we um, keep them at the forefront? It really comes back to what I said earlier. We, we can only really learn from our customers. We ourselves, and, and if, if we think back to even, let's say 15 years ago, 10 to 15 years ago, when we were starting with what ultimately became Volta, um, we had a vision and by we, obviously, the development was done over in Italy, but the vision, there was a certain vision for what a tool like that should, should be like, uh, what the features would be, what, uh, how the, the user would inter interface with it. If we hadn't had the involvement of a major automotive client, in that case it was Ford, to actually be involved in, the, uh, in, in helping to design that, i.e. to bring the industrial know-how and to say, if we were to use a tool like this, we would need features X, Y, Z in it. That's something we can't come up with ourselves without that partnership. So really it comes back to what I said, uh, how I answered the previous question. A lot of it is really about the partnership. It's about working with the, uh, with the clients, understanding where they're going. The last thing we can do is tell them where they should go. What we need to do is to try and understand where they want to go, where they could be going, um, and help them to get there. But they need to help us as well as they do uh, to be able to adapt what we're offering to what they need, and then to develop tools which help them to do exactly what they need to do. So really, we're only part of a very large ecosystem. It, we are certainly not a company that produces a, a tool which is uh, which exists in its own right, and we go and sell it to the, to the end user and say this will answer all your questions. Absolutely not. We learn by working closely with the, uh, with the end users. I, I think that keeping the customers in the digital transformations means that you offer a product which is up to date in their IT content. So an IT product of today is not an IT product of yesterday. And Sometimes we say that uh, 
a software is something that gets uh, easily wasted material. I mean, if you don't maintain it, if you don't keep it up with the technologies. And our role is in fact to have of taking all the best IT practices in managing data and processes to the engineering community. So the IT uh, directions are dictated by large IT corporations and you cannot think of changing that. But the needs of the engineering process is different and we need to adapt and select the best actual technologies that you find outside the engineering community to fit the engineering work. Uh, that is one of our, has always been one of our goal, major goals. And I think is the way we contribute to actually deliver that digital revolution that on paper is always there, but in practice is relatively rare. But there is an accurate solution to be provided to the customers. So our strategy is to continue to pursue the technical excellence. But on the other hand, there is a growth target that needs to be met. And that might be probably obtained through alliances uh, with the larger players that would allow us to penetrate the industry in a wider sense, which means moving the processes of engineering in also in interaction with the other departments in the company, which means a, a much wider adoption of our technologies in, in the North American industry. And I think the one thing that is important is that we, um, when we decide we're going to do something and we announce we're going to do something and we talk to our clients and let them know that we're working in, uh, on a certain feature, bringing in, maybe even bringing a new product to market. Uh, we have to be, it really comes back to the credibility that Carlo talked about, that we can't go down the route of um, what is sometimes called PowerPoint engineering, where we show that something can be, can be done and give the impression we're working on it and it never appears or it appears a few years down the road. We have to keep, again, it comes back to working with our clients, keep them involved, um, make sure that they're part of that decision process. We don't make these decisions in isolation. Uh, ultimately, we do these things in order that our, our clients can get more out of our technology. And, um, and to be honest, make them aware of what we're doing all along the way so that they have the opportunity to, uh, to comment, to criticize, to ask us to modify, to commend us, whatever it is they want to do, but to get the feedback, that's the main thing. And to doing that with a strong technical team in Italy, a strong application team in, uh, in North America, and obviously a, a strong alliance with our, with our uh, end users, um, will, I think, give us a, a competitive advan advantage over um, some of the other, certainly the other players that are, uh, that are within our field.